Hey guys, back again, and today guys, um, I just wanted to pretty much talk about some stuff on my mind, get your guys' opinions, so on and so forth, and unfortunately I can't do that without playing a game of some kind anyhow, so... We're going to do a 30-man Royal Rumble. I'm not going to be physically in the game. I'm just going to be watching it. I think we should just... Well, I'm going to push the randomizer 10 times see so we get to start the match. 10. It's our draw day. Fair enough. Uh, random. Doesn't matter. I'm not even in the game. So, right, I'm going to put the joy pad down, guys, and just talk about basically the stuff I want to talk about. But the game plan in the background is for people who just want to watch it. Something random and I don't have to play and can concentrate on what I want to say, guys. So, basically, guys, what I wanted to touch on was just where games are going for me, guys. I don't know about you personally, what you guys genuinely think. But for me, guys, I'm just so pissed off with how far... You know, these games and these companies are going. I mean, what can you do, guys? Literally, what can you do? Everything they're bringing out is just not ready. And I just don't understand the marketing or even the reason why they would bring it out in that state. It's almost like they don't care about the people who buy the games. But it's also like they just don't even give a flying toss. In general, you know, they don't just don't care. And it, and it gets me, guys. It really gets me. Because it's like... All the years that video games have been available, you know, all the way back from the Atari up to now. And this is apparently the future. It's not the future, guys. It's, it's just... Broken and fucked. I mean, if the gaming, the games is coming out, guys. Right? If that was put into a, uh, what, what am I going to word? In, oh, let's play the, that. Every game that come out was licensed by one company, guys. You would find that particular company to be shady, shit, unreliable, unworthy, and you would just straight up give it that many bad reviews that eventually you'd have to close. And that's where video games are going, guys, because it's shit. It's shit, guys. There is nothing that screams a good video game anymore. It's got nothing to do with graphics, nothing to do with story, nothing to do with anything like that. It's all to do with, basically, the game actually being playable on the disc you buy. And, you know, I'm just like the PlayStation 5, guys, right? I want to get into that, guys. The, look at that. The launch has been a complete fucking shambles. I've never in the entire 31 years of living seen a, a console launch this shit. Literally, guys. I mean, you know, from right the way back to... The NES and then the Super Nintendo and the, the Mega Drive and that. Don't get me wrong, some consoles had rocky starts from like just people just didn't like the console in general or a certain style of games that was coming out with it generally or whatever, you know. But we've never had a console launch this shit. It was completely unready. It was nowhere near ready. And, you know, they did the same thing with the PlayStation 3. It's just like they get bored. And you've got like 10 people around a table and they're like, what can we do? Oh, we'll bring out a new console. And it's not new, guys. It's not new. I mean, like, let's just transition, guys, right? PlayStation 1. Fucking iconic. You can't... You Nobody out there can fault the PlayStation. If you can, guys, come at me. Tell me why, why the PlayStation was so bad. You had so many games that it literally made that console playable to any age and any ethnic of person, you know? You had platform, you had puzzle, you had RPG, you had long-term games, you had a statement, you know, you had games that made the Sony PlayStation. And 
that's my point, guys. You know, you had your Crash Bandicoot. You had arcade games on there, like Ridge Racer. And it was fucking fantastic, guys. And then they brought out the PlayStation 2. And again, guys, I cannot fault that console. Did the fat PlayStation 2 have problems? Of course it did. Um, I was lucky. I never had any problems with mine. But we ended up getting a slim line anyway. And that thing, guys, was fucking indestructible like the PlayStation 1. There was never... Oh, shit, my console's overheated. No media errors. No shit errors. No, nothing like that, guys. Consoles were fucking built to last. And they was enjoyable and great machines. Moving on, guys. PlayStation 3. Again, right? It felt ready. It felt ready when the PlayStation 3 came out. Because PlayStation 2 had pretty much hit its peak. You know, there was... What six, seven, maybe even ten thousand games out there from worldwide, and you know the graphics they couldn't really get it any better. They'd hit their limit with it, but it was still a fucking awesome console. So right, PlayStation 3 comes out, guys. I remember when I first got mine. It was March 2007, and fucking amazing, guys. First two games I got: Motor Storm and Resistance: Fall of Man. And I tell you guys, I was blown away. I was blown away. And, you know, the launch was fucking amazing. They seemed to be enough consoles to everybody that actually pre-ordered it. And, you know, the launch went really good. It came out on the day. Uh, games, you know, they weren't fast flowing out. But they were there, guys. We had Ridge Racer 7. You had Tiger Woods 07. You had Formula 1 Championship Edition. You know, you had all of them out. And then, you know, over time, more and more came out. And, you know, that weren't the greatest launch, though, again. Because there were some games that weren't ready. I mean, they promised that Haze was going to be ready on launch, and it wasn't. But at the end of the day, you know, it did come out, and it was not as expected. But today, guys, that game is amazing compared to some shit we've got now. So we move forward, guys. PlayStation 4 comes out. Do, do I think that the PlayStation 3 was dead before they made the PS4 decision? No, I don't, guys. I think the PlayStation 3 had at least another two-year cycle before people would have made it stale and the graphics wouldn't have got any better, guys. But you could see the, the, the big improvement in graphics, I suppose, with the PlayStation 4. I mean, you go back and look at GTA 5, guys. Same game on PlayStation 4. It's amazing. But my problem with the PlayStation 4, guys, came when I started buying games and realizing they were online only. But it's getting worse, guys. The PlayStation 4 is actually getting worse. The fucking games are getting worse. I mean, it's proof, guys. I'll give you some proof. And, you know, take it as a pinch of salt. But look it up yourself. Call of Duty Ghost was a PlayStation 3 game. They ported it to the PS4 and Xbox One. It was a great game, guys. Great port. Wasn't the best Call of Duty, you know. But, however, guys, it was all on the disc. You could put a disc in, play it there and then. It was ready to go. Moving on. What came after that? I believe it was Infinite Warfare. I might be wrong on that one, guys, so do not quote me. I can't remember the entire cycle of them all. But again, guys, the game is on the disc. Then you go to, like, Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4. Again, guys. The, you know, Black Ops... No, no, I'm going a bit too fast, guys. Right, Black Ops 3, guys. Game's on the disc. Campaign is on the disc. They bring out, you know, I might not be going to order, guys, but, you know, you got World War II. Great game, great campaign. Campaign is not on the disc, clearly, because you need a patch. See, guys, what I'm saying? Look, it's gone from the games on the disc. Obviously, there's updates if you want to do this and you want to do that. But the actual, you know, multiplayer bot mode and the game itself is on the fucking disc. You go forward a couple more, guys, and it starts to be... You need a patch. And now we've got to the point of Modern Warfare and Black Ops, the latest one, Cold War, to the point that the fucking game isn't even on the disc, guys. There's nothing on the disc. I think that it's not nothing to do with developers. I know what they're doing. They're trying to make it so shit 
that you, in the end, you think, what's the point in buying the disc when it needs all this anyway? I might as well just buy it digitally. And that's what they want, guys. They want it to go digital. But I would hope and pray that you guys out there, like me, and would boycott it. Wouldn't buy it at all because you don't understand what that's going to do, guys. Job aspect. That's going to shut down all game retailers. It's going to shut down all second-hand, what you call, I call trinket shops, you know. However you want to call it, porn shop, whatever you want to call it, guys. There's no, you know, DVDs are starting to go obsolete. Don't know why, because I love watching films. What's wrong with having the DVD? Why does everyone seem to think that fucking digital media is the way forward? It fucking is not. Now, don't get me wrong, guys, right? I love playing my music in my car through a USB chip device. That is great. I can see why that works. I want to have a thousand songs in my car, but not a thousand CDs. However, I do not think CDs are a dinosaur and obsolete. I think it just goes for that particular thing. Most people like to be able to buy certain fucking things. Why, if it ain't broke, are you trying to fix it? You know what I'm saying? It's almost like the world's solution is to fuck something worse than fix it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like I said, right? Games, guys. I said they should bring out a data disc. And they did that with Cyberpunk and they fucked it. I personally think they need to rework this shit, guys. Like, they should make it acceptable for both styles of party of gamer. So, for example, guys, if the game's online only and requires the internet at all times, then, yeah, don't bother bringing that game out on disc, because there's no point. You know, if it's not released at all, we know then. Well, that's an online only game. Simple as. Fuck it, sort of thing, you know what I mean? But, however, right, if the game is not ready for launch at the date you've said it's releasing, then release it digitally and make us people that want it physically wait an extra month like the Switch do. The Switch don't bring the game out the same release date as the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. They make you wait and it's better, guys, because you get the full product on that little cartridge. Does it still sell as well? I think, yes, it does. I think it generally do sell as well, if not better, because everyone knows... The longer you wait, the better it is. Doom, guys. Doom Eternal. Had that game every year now, at least. And already, it's only just released on the Switch. Does that mean it's going to flop on the Switch? No. Because some people generally would have wanted it on the Switch and will wait. And that's the point I'm getting at, guys. People will wait to buy the perfect finished product it speaks volume and why the fuck are there two cut angles in the ring that's retarded but yeah it speaks volume of your company when you're delivering the full package rather than a tester and still charging people the full package price it's like someone buying a brand new car and then using it as a fucking decoy dummy car you know we, we've tested it out for everything. Rev limiter, speedo, skidding it, 200,000 miles on it. It works perfectly. I still want the same amount of money for it because nobody's technically owned the car. It was test driven. You know, it wouldn't work. No one would buy it, guys. You'd think, fuck off. It's shit. You don't want it. And that's my point, guys. I think the PlayStation 5 has come out too quick. Um, not necessarily saying it's not ready to come out. I'm saying that with COVID and the way that this year was, guys, majority of people don't have the money for a PlayStation 5. Most people haven't got enough money to feed their fucking family at the moment. And all Sony thought was, yay, let's release a PlayStation 5. We ain't got enough console units for everyone that actually does want one and can afford it. Where games aren't fucking ready yet. And it's just stupid, guys. It was the fucking biggest shamble I've ever seen. If they would have waited till July or even next Christmas to release 
the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, they would have had enough consoles to go around for everybody. Scouters wouldn't have been doing what they're doing now. And the game list would have been a lot bigger. You'd have probably got a lot more people interested. It's the same thing I say about governments that keep, you know, taking too much money away from the one shop that's struggling. If you took 2p off a million shops, you get just as much as taking 10 grand from the one shop. But the difference is, because you spread that strain across the board, they don't go belly up, they don't go bankrupt, they don't, you know, and that's the same with this guys. If they would have waited to release the PlayStation 5 in a better state, and waited till they had more games and more consoles ready to go, more people would have had the money for it, more people would have been interested because they'd have had a library of maybe a hundred games on launch, people would have been like, I want that game, that game, that game, and then other people were like, I want that one, that one, and that one. It wouldn't have been this fucking shit show what they've done now because it's just it's crap guys it doesn't make any sense they've got no consoles ready to go for everybody they've got nothing out there game wise that's exclusive they should have made Sackboy and Miles Morales Spider-Man exclusive to the PS5 they didn't they brought them out on the bloody PS4 as well which is fucking stupid you are trying to sell the new generation of console, then fucking put games on there that are exclusive to that to make people want that. It's like, right, I'm not, I'm not a fucking one brand gamer, guys. I'm not all Sony, Sony, Sony. I love Nintendo, guys. I love Microsoft, and I love, you know, the Sony brand. But I just don't see a console war ever because they keep bringing out the same shit you know what I mean Xbox had its statements back in the day with Blinks the Cat they've got the licensing for Conker you know what I'm saying they could bring a new Conker look at Nintendo guys they've got Zelda that ain't on any other Mario ain't on any other that's what makes that console so good because when you buy it, if you've got a PlayStation or you've got an Xbox, guys, you buy a, a Nintendo Switch, you know you're not just sitting there wasting your money and you're not just sitting there like, well, I don't know what the fuck I've got that for. Because you can, you, I got my Switch, guys, and I've got at least 100 games on there that are not on any other system. You know, and that, that might be debatable to some people whether or not you like them games like Mario and Mario Kart and Kirby and Zelda and stuff. But at the long and short of it, guys, they're exclusive to the Switch. You know, so that's what makes that console buyable and feasible to buy one. What makes the PlayStation 5 buyable right now? There's fucking nothing. All right, backwards compatible. Great. It's not 100% backwards compatible, which would have made it even better. Because you imagine, guys, if the PlayStation 1 game would have gone in it and you could have streamed it like I'm streaming this. And I could take you down memory lane and what that game did for me as a kid. Fucking awesome. But they didn't think of that. And that makes me feel like Sony's not thinking of where they came from and where they are. You know, they should have done it so that you could be like, look, we understand, you know. You want to play your retro games. You might not want to have them all hooked up. This PlayStation 5 should have been 100% backwards compatibility, guys. Even if they'd have had to give you two disk drives to do so, because obviously Blu-ray's Blu-ray, and the black discs and all that lot are completely different for the eye lens. I understand that. I wouldn't have minded. But it's just stupid, guys. But let me know down below, guys, if you think the PlayStation 5 should have waited till a mid-next year to... Christmas next year release. I believe they should have done. So many people still haven't got a PS4 and the games still have a long time yet to go. Would be great to see. I feel that they've dropped so much. It's like Cabela's. The hunting games. They would be awesome if they brought out a decent one on PlayStation 5 or Slash 4 and it would be awesome guys if they brought back a lot of PlayStation 1 games. Now I know that that's not going to be a big, you know, 
step forward for a lot of people. But if you're like me, guys, and you want to see what today's graphics would do to a game that you loved back in the day, I mean, just look at the games, guys, on PlayStation 1. You had a lot of Walt Disney games, Hercules, Little Mermaid, Lion King, all things like that, guys. Just think with today's graphics, the whole movie was made up of graphics, guys. They could make the game almost like you're in the movie. You know, Hercules would look like Hercules. It would be fucking awesome. Not for everybody, but a lot would like it. Me being one of them, guys. Mickey Mouse. Who remembers Castle of Illusion? And stuff like that on the Mega Drive. Now, this is where I think Sega needs to come back and make a new console, guys. If they made the Dreamcast 2... With the PlayStation 5 graphics without all that online fucking shit. And they took back their licensing on all the Mickey Mouse and Walt Disney franchises and stuff. And they brought back like Castle of Illusion and the World of Illusion and fucking Quackshot and stuff like that. I seriously think that a lot of people would be interested in their console. I really do. And you got to think they've got a lot of arcade licensing in Sega. They could remaster them games, bring them out as a console exclusive, and they'd be fucking awesome, guys. They really, really would. But the, you see, that's where console wars go well. When you've got to literally have all the consoles in your house because you want to play so many games. Don't get me wrong, Xbox One has an amazing array of games from Forza Horizon. That's their biggest grossing game for me. That's, and I said for me, guys, because you, know, you might like Halo more. You might like Gears of War more. But again, look, guys, they're games that aren't on the PlayStation. That's great when they do that, because then you want an Xbox. But you still want your PlayStation, because they've got Ratchet and Clank. They've got Spyro the Dragon. But that's the thing I'm talking about, guys. They need... To go back to collecting and bringing the, the console wars the right way instead of keep going about this DLC shit. I mean, how many of you guys remember when you bought a game? They didn't announce DLC first. I blame fucking Ubisoft and Activision for that shit. With fucking Battlefield and fucking Call of Duty going, oh yes, new DLC. Bloody, bloody, blah, get the season pass and all that shit. Because people would pay for it. I understand why you'd pay for it, guys. You want that game you love to play. You want it to be, you know, ooh, even more, even more, even more. You know, it's good. But they shouldn't automatically have DLC planned for the fucker. That should come after the game's been launched, released, and you get feedback saying, oh, that would have been cool if they'd have done this. Or that would have been cool if they'd have done that. And then that's when they should go back to the drawing board and go, oh, we could bring that out as DLC. That would be a really cool idea, yeah. But they don't. They've already got it planned. We plan to bring out five DLC packs. 69.99 each. Fucking... It's bollocks. And I don't know, guys. I personally think the PlayStation 5 and Xbox X would have sold so much better if they'd have waited until next year. And I just don't see why they didn't. And I don't know, guys. It's like... I, I really do fucking despise the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. Because I feel that that's where consoles started to die. Because Not because it's getting obsolete. It's because they started to bring out broken, half-finished fucking games. And games that needed the internet. Who remembers that Need for Speed, guys? Internet connection required at all times. For Need for Speed! I know they've brought out games since then. And it hasn't needed the internet connection at all times. And fantastic. Great, great, great. But for some reason, EA... Ubisoft and Activision are all over that fucking online only, especially Ubisoft. Oh my god, man. EA and Ubisoft, they can't help it. That's all about online only, online only, making it online only. Internet connection required, internet connection required for this. DLC, DLC and all that shit. Loot crate and fucking bollocks. I just don't understand why and who it is that came into thinking that was a great idea personally I don't I really don't guys and uh, 
You know, like I said, it's my opinion. I know it's my opinion. But I can't be the only person sat there thinking that if they would have just waited, was it really that bad this year that they needed that fucking money that quickly? I mean, let's face it, guys. Sony is a multi-billionaire company. Fucking maybe even trillionaire. They've got TVs being sold. Fucking DVD players. Hi-fi systems. Everything. And then Microsoft. You've got PC, Windows, and all that. You didn't need to rush out these consoles like your life depended on it. You could have waited, improved your craft, brought the best console out, and made it for everybody so that everyone was happy with it. I just don't see where a console is used nowadays when you're trying to make a console into a fucking bona fide PC. I mean, you're like, it needs the internet. It needs the, It doesn't need the internet. You made it need the internet. When you designed the console, you designed it around the fucking internet. Why did you do that? I'm all down to playing online with people, and I'm all down for the internet, but you don't base it on it. I mean, they're doing it more and more, guys. I mean, you've got fridge freezers that fucking can hook up to your Wi-Fi so that you can hook up to your phone so that when you're in the shop, it can tell you what you're missing or what's in your fridge, what's your sell-by dates on certain things. My washing machine works off the internet, guys, and I fucking hate it. You can't wash your clothes without fucking... And then it don't work all the time, guys. It's got to find the signal, and then it's like, I can't find it. Can't find it. How can you not find it, you twat? I'm standing beside it. It just makes you wonder what they're going to do next. I mean, even cars, guys. There's cars with the fucking internet inside them. What am I going to do next? Underpants with fucking internet in them? Telling me that I've got an asshole? Oh, hey. You've worn your pants for two days. Wow. Oh, no, no, the big eyes, don't you? Your pants have approximately 300 days of wear in them. And you have approximately 44 more washes at high rinse before they will rip and shrink. Would you like me to book you a new pair from Amazon? Yeah. You know, you get adverts, you're walking down the fucking road and your pants go, Hi. Have you had a fart and it smells that bad that you need this? Why don't you get yourself the new Glade that fits in your underpants that when you fart it smells like raspberries and strawberries and then it'll go back to you nothing and you walk in again. You think, what the fuck was that? Imagine doing a bank job or something because you're a robber. You're running down the fucking road and all of a sudden your fucking hat and jacket comes up with an advert like you get on YouTube. It'd be fucking hilarious. Imagine that. Police are running past. They don't know where you are. Next thing, Black and Decker. Get the latest Black and Decker thing now for your husband this year for Christmas. Only $99.99 at Argos. Yep. It'd be fucking stupid. What in the fuck are they doing? It's just becoming stupid. It's like phones, guys. I got the latest iPhone. Next week, new iPhone. What the fuck? It costs three grand. Why do you need a new one that quick? You know, Apple iPod, Apple this, Apple that. I fucking hate Apple products, guys, because they're so fucking complicated. I just want to put my songs on it. I want to put a ringtone on it. You can't do that. You need to go on the Apple iTunes store. You need to go on the Apple. Oh, fuck off. I had an Apple iPod, guys. I only wanted to put one new song on it. That's all I wanted to do. And I fucking wiped every other song I had on my iPod for the one song. I mean, I wanted that song on there, yeah, but I didn't want it on fucking repeat. It's just, I just don't, really don't. Someone needs to explain to me why the world is changing in the way that people go, it's for the better. It's the future. It's not the future. It's called you're fucking it up. I mean, have you not noticed, guys, there's less and less and less you can do now without it feeling like it's fucked. You know, the whole world's getting put round a leash and it feels like you're being strangled by all these rules and bollocks. It's stupid, guys. 
Can't play your music loud. Can't draw a ride. Can't go here. Can't do that. Can't, 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 can't. And then they go, be grateful. You're free. <laughs> free to do what? To be told what the fuck you can and can't do. There's a bigger list of what you can't do than what you can do. Then they wonder why everyone's going mad and fucking giving up in the world. Like, you know, Christmas. No one's got any Christmas cheer anymore. What the fuck do you expect? You put up a Christmas tree and some twat goes in the background global warming. Think of the seals. Think of the whales. Think, oh, fuck yourself, you prat. You know, you got jumbo jets and you got fucking military planes practicing their maneuvers because you think that thick fuck's going to forget how to bank a plane. If a missile was fired at me and I was in a plane, guys, I don't care if I've had an hour, a thousand hours training or one minute training. I'd think, fuck that, I'm jumping out. Well, you do what you could to get away from the fucking missile. You want you need to train that. We train them. We train you, yeah. But if I joyride in my car, I get wrong. But you can joyride in your plane all you want. It is fucking stupid. Really is. We're going to do another Royal Rumble, guys. Start it again because, it's, you know, it's just that. But yes, yeah, what I'm saying, guys. You know, someone needs to explain to me why the world's turning so fucking stupid. And why people ain't even throwing a toss about it. Because, I mean, like, I'd love to know. I really would love to fucking know. It's going stupid. And not for the better either. It's literally for the worst. I mean, I don't understand it. And I don't think I'm ever going to understand it, guys. I've heard of the expression, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But they seem to try to fix things that ain't broke. And it pisses me off. But, you know, let me know, like I said, guys, down below, what you guys' opinion is on it, because it's it's just stupid. But like I said, back to the thing when people say Christmas cheer. You know, there's no colourful lights anymore. The, the, the towns don't decorate up anymore. Kids today, guys, if you was born between 2006 upwards, you don't know what Christmas was like, man. And I'll probably hear the same thing said from people that were born in the 60s and the 70s, guys. And you're probably right. But back in my day, guys, Santa Claus was plastered everywhere. You know, you had Santa Claus riding reindeers. You had fucking coloured lights, guys. You had Christmas trees on every corner. You had people saying Merry Christmas. You had genuine Christmas cheer. Now you get told to fuck off. And what are the coloured lights, guys? They're all white or they're all this shitty blue. I just don't understand why the world is becoming a fucking cesspit of shit. It really is. You know, you got people moaning and groaning about fucking loud... Everyone moans. I know I'm moaning now, guys. I know I am. But I'm moaning at people that moan about shit that don't need to be moaned at. I mean, you go on these Facebook pages, you know, you you got one yourself, probably, guys, where you live, you got, you know, a community page. And you just get them fucking moan about bollocks. Like, oh, did you hear that car last night? Did anyone see a car last night that had a loud exhaust on it? Like, you ain't got nothing better to do. If a bloke or a woman, because I'm not sexist, enjoys their car that much that they want to modify it to make it theirs, why do you have to go out of your way to piss and moan? I'd understand if he stood outside your door at one o'clock in the morning going, woom, 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 you know, then that makes fucking sense, you know? But when he's just like, and it's gone. You took more time out of your day than it did for the car to fuck off. And it's just stupid. It's like people, ooh, loud music. Loud music. Why are you bothered? Is he selling drugs? Is he trying to adopt kids? Is he doing something nasty? If he wants to go down the road, or she, I should say, with his music or her music, going, boo, 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 boo. And then, you know, it's gone like, boo, 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 boo. And it's gone. Why does that bother you? 
I don't understand. It's like when people go moan about every fucking thing. The whole world revolves around stress and fucking crap. You know, I blame social media, guys. I really do. Because even my voice, guys, my voice has an influence on people. I get that. As does everyone else's voices. But, you know, if someone said to me tomorrow, I'll give you £200 million to sell my product. It's absolutely shit, but you sell it. I wouldn't do it, guys. I wouldn't. And people could say what they want. I wouldn't. Because the simple fact is, if it's shit, I'm going to tell you it's fucking shit. So, I don't know. I really don't. That's what WWE though, guys. This is a perfect example. That's going downhill. Why? Because the skeleton called Vince McMahon doesn't, rev you know, doesn't realise what's good for business. He's still living in a fucking daydream. You know, you can see, you can see it, guys. I can see it. I would like the the, the the WWE to be more unpredictable. You know, we don't want spoilers. <laughs> like The Rock's going to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Well, that's a fucking shock factor, isn't it? Now, if it happens, because it's like, we knew. It would be so much cooler if it was unplanned. No one knew about it. <laughs> well, that's the problem nowadays. Social media leaks everything. I was fucking took the track plug out. <laughs> but yeah, guys, it is annoying. It really, really is. It's like I'm really happy about the VR. And I see, guys, that's moving forward in the right way. You're making games unique. You feel like you're in that place. A video game is supposed to take you out of the real world and put you in an imaginary world. It's almost like you're living the adventure or you're living as a race driver or whatever, you know, it's meant to be fun. And with VR, it is a lot of fun. You can have jokes, banter, you can add like glitchy bits to yourself, you know, like you're not meant to do things. You can feel like you're winding the characters up. You can have a bit of diversity in the game, you know, it makes it hilarious, a bit of fun, you know good times you can go on YouTube now guys and find like VR compilations of people having good times and you can see they're actually enjoying their self when the fuck do you hear someone go oh look at this game is digital it's not really real at all it's never gonna be real it's online only I'm getting called a cunt I'm getting called I'm shit at the game I'm getting all this I'm getting lag I'm getting fucking kicked out the getting it's not working how many of them people do you see going oh yes I'm having a fucking time in my life with this game what happened to good old days guys like with the PlayStation magazine you know you'd get it and you look forward to a game coming out and you see the release date and guess what guys fucking no behold it would actually come out on that day. You'd get in your car, drive to Woolworths, walk in, get it. Find old fat Sally behind the tech counter. She'd say, how you been? Fucking normal. Give me the game. Yes, go home. And guess what, guys? If I had a PlayStation 4 game that I download off the store, like Cyberpunk, check this out. I could be downloading it at home. Oh, yes, that's the new technology that is, guys. But I could have got in my car, gone to Woolworths, bought a PlayStation 1, come home, set up the console, took out the game out of the wrapper, had my tea, gone to bed, got back up again, put my game in, and got halfway through that fucking game before I've even downloaded Cyberpunk. And that's my point, guys. We're not going forward. We're going backwards in time. Why do you need to install the game onto the console anyway? You still need the disc to play it. So why don't you just put the game data on the fucking disc? What is on the disc that makes it so big? I had a 60 gig PlayStation 3, guys, when I first got it. I never felt it. I had over 100 games on it. Never felt it. I eventually got a 500 gig one. No, I didn't. I tell you, I got a 320 first, then a 500 gig. 
I could probably get nearly every fucking game on PlayStation 3 on the 500 gig one. One terabyte, you'd never fill it with a PlayStation 3. The PlayStation 1, one terabyte, you could only get like five games on the fucker. Apparently that's moving forward. They're going, they're going the completely wrong direction. And they need to sort it out. They really do. It's going bollocks. The whole world seems to me like it's just going the wrong way with everything. You know, oh, we're going to sugar tax this and sugar tax that. No artificial this and no artificial that. Don't do this and don't do that. And it's just, that's all you keep hearing, guys. You know? They make Christmas stressful. They make bonfire night stressful. But again, you shouldn't have fireworks. You got, I mean, just recently, guys, right? This is complete random. If you've got this far in the video, guys, thanks a lot. But Sainsbury's, guys, they've stopped selling physical media because they have an Argos go in their stores. How did I find out? I found out the hard way, guys. Last week when I went to go buy a couple of Blu-rays and found out, oh, we don't sell them anymore. We stopped selling physical media. You know, you got Asda's, um, where I live, guys. We have a big superstore, and it was uh, it was 24/7. And due to my anxiety and my wife's anxiety, we loved going shopping at two o'clock in the morning. Helped with our illness. Well, that went out of the fucking window because they stopped doing 24-7. And for what? See, that's what I'm saying, guys. They say they're moving forward. It's for the best. It's for the better. It's not for the best, not for the better. It's going shit. Everything's going to shit. Shops are going to shit. The high street's going to shit. Video games are going to shit because they're bringing out broken fucking messy shit. I can't physically say, guys, this year, we've had a decent game this year that was actually exactly what they promised. They said that... No, generally, I can't think of one, guys. I'm seriously thinking. I can't. I can't think of one. If you guys could think of a game that dropped in 2020 that actually did what it said it was going to do and was good, decent, and was all on the disc, no online and all that lot, tell me, guys. Please tell me, because I can't think of one. I really can't. I'm really trying to think. Because, uh, see, Dirt 5, broken shambles, fucked. Still broken even now. Can't fucking platinum it, because can't get the 1,000-mile trophy. Um... Call of Duty. I'm not even going to go down there. That's a laughing stock. Fucking never laughed so hard in all my life. What a shit that was. Uh, Cyberpunk. <laughs> that was a joke. That was hilarious. Uh, very funny to the developers of that one. You know, you made it look like you... Yeah, fuck off. Uh, that's that. Ride 4. Didn't really deliver to me. You know, at least it's on the disc. Oh, I've got to admit, guys, even the Assassin's Creed Valhalla and that lot, you know, it's got, it's, it's got really bad issues with that. I, I can't think of a game this year that I've enjoyed rather than the VR, guys. And to be honest, if it weren't for the VR, I don't think there'd be any good games at all this year because the uh, Walking Dead games and the Drunken Bar Fight and all of that on the VR, guys, they are fucking, they're awesome, guys. They really are. Uh, take away the swearing and, you know, me just rambling bollocks, guys. The Walking Dead games on the VR are the absolute best. You know, they're up there on VR. And to be honest, guys, I really appreciate the VR. Um, I didn't when I first when it first came out. And I had one and I made myself that ill. I should have persevered with it, guys. I really should. I wish I had it done now. But I'm so happy that I've got another one and I play it. You said, guys, I, I really enjoy it. It is so much fun. You could do so much with it. It makes games just, you know, if the game was already a 10, that makes it a 15, in my opinion. It's just so much you could do with it. It makes games a lot more different 
play in as different aspects of everything from the gameplay itself to the way you play it to the things you could do it it's just a lot of fun so you know the VR to my opinion guys is a 10 out of 10 and I really do hope the PlayStation 5 will bring out a new VR with the backwards compatibility of all the games you've already got and I hope they absolutely knock out more games sole purpose you know like exclusive as well as maybe getting companies to add VR mode to other games like they did for um, Dirt Rally and stuff and I think that would make that just oh yeah that would make it awesome in my opinion it really really would really really would I'd, I'd buy a lot more games on VR guys definitely but after this Royal Rumble guys I think I'm gonna call the gameplay there because it's not really such gameplay it's more the fact of you just want to talk guys and I couldn't do that without having a gameplay in the background and I didn't want to just sit on the title screen and be bored so I you know let you guys watch this Um you guess who you think is going to win the Royal Rumble? I have no idea. That's another thing, guys. Royal Rumble will be next month, which is awesome. Can't wait for that. But, yeah. I'm, uh... I'm happy, guys, to... to uh, you know, just get a lot of off my chest, really, because it's fucking annoying. Anyway, guys. I was going to say, call it who you think is going to win, but there's still more coming out. What, what number are you up to? We'll see in a minute. 19, we've got loads to go yet. Uh, has Brock Lesnar been in it yet? If Brock Lesnar's not been in it yet, guys, that's my pick. I'm going to say Brock Lesnar. Because I know I picked him in and he's going to be played by the AI, so I don't know. We'll see. Depends who else is in it. But <clears throat> all in all, guys, that's my the thing that is just getting to me. But, you know, I, I wanted to, to address it to see if anybody else is just as stressed and pissed off as I am. Because... There's so many good games you see coming out like Far Cry 6 and then you start to think, oh yeah, what's that good like? Patches and fucking updates and shit. I just want developers to stop doing it. Stop doing it. Delay the fucking game if you have to.